Welcome back to EGM 702, Photogrammetry and Advanced Image Analysis. This is Week 1, Part 4, Selecting Control Points. So everything that we covered in Part 3 is something that can be done in the relative geometry. So we don't have to worry about the real world at all. We can just use the camera geometries. But if we want to relate that real world geometry or that relative geometry to the real world, if we want to actually make real world measurements with our images, then we're going to need control points. Control points are points whose exact-ish location is known. And I say exact-ish because the, the overall the accuracy of our images, the accuracy of the uh, products that we extract from our, uh, from our images, is going to depend on the accuracy of our control points. So you can use control points that are fairly inexact and still get some usable measurements, but the more precisely you know your control point locations, the better results you will get. So control points are used for transforming the relative to the absolute coordinates. They're also used for estimating scale and as I mentioned, they determine the accuracy of the scene or the, the products that we extract from our images. In the best case, that is to say the most accurate control points we can get, we are using artificial targets, usually with some kind of GPS or global navigation uh, survey. So this example here from some field work in Alaska, you can see these large Tyvek crosses that we've put out. Uh, we're doing um, uh, a GPS survey on the center of the cross and then in the images that we acquire we'll be able to find this. We'll know the exact location of this cross down to less than 10 centimeters or so and so that'll give us a highly accurate DEM um, assuming that the images that we get are usable. It might also look something like this. Uh, so if you're not in a very rugged, uh, out of the way landscape, you might see these sort of white squares or so uh, spray painted on the ground with a red target or some other color target in the center so that you can find the exact center of this. So again, we're looking at GPS antennas to give us very precise, very accurate locations. Um, so that we can have very precise, accurate final products. In the less good case, we are using natural points. Uh, so these are natural uh, features that we can find in the landscape, so mountain peaks and so on. Um, we can use these, we can find these using topographic maps. Uh, we can find these using existing orthophotos and DEMs, so we can use products that we already have to get control points. They will not be as precise as the results that we get from this kind of survey. And remember, whenever you're looking for control points or putting out control points for your surveys, you have to be able to see them in the images. So if you print out a little square like this, and you set it out all across the scene and you don't actually see this in your different images that you've acquired, it's not really useful. So make sure that the targets that you're using are things that you can actually see um, in the scale of images that you're using. Some different strategies for uh, using or for setting out control points. Typically, we need at least five to 10 control points to, to get accurate or to get good, accurate control of a scene. Um, they need to be well distributed through the survey area. And that means both in the X, Y direction, but also in the Z direction. So remember that we have uh, varying topography means that we have different scales going on. Uh, we need to be able to, to estimate these scales at different heights, so we want to make sure that our uh, ground control points are distributed in the Z direction as well. So if I have an example here of six different images that are all sort of overlapping together, what this might look like 
with our overlapping area here designated in black. Uh, what this might look like for finding control points is we might find a control point here, which can be seen in this image and this image. We might find a point here, which can be seen in this image and this image. We can keep going, making sure that we're sticking to the overlapping areas of the image. If we put control points in only one image, they will not be usable. We need to be able to see the control points in at least two of the images in our survey. Typically, again, we need more of these with the more varied terrain that we have. This might not always be possible, but try to do the best job that you can. In the less good case, which is to say strategy, which is to say surveys where we have not done the planning, maybe we're using historic air photos, we need to make use of features that we can see in the landscape. And you'll see what this looks like in the practical for this week. Um, but in this case, we are looking for easy to identify unique features. We wanna make sure that we're looking at the right point. If you are not able to find the same point in multiple images, you're not going to be able to, to fix your absolute geometry. So what this might look like is something like road intersections is usually a good example. Bridges are another good example. Buildings, depending on the scale of your images. Uh, peaks and crests can often be really good, um, really good examples of maybe not easy to identify features, but features that you can find in multiple images. One thing to keep in mind though is that features are not going to be static or not necessarily going to be static. So in the example shown here, um, we have our 1979 orthophoto and you can see what this sort of traffic circle looking thing uh, looks like. In the 1950s topo map, you can see that it doesn't actually look the same. It looks fairly similar, um, but there's some extra roads now that weren't there um, that weren't there in the 1950s and maybe the road that we could see in the 1950s map is no longer visible in the 1979 map. Um, so check the dates of your photos and the maps or reference information that you're using. Another good example from this same thing, so we have our 1979 orthophoto and we have our 1984 orthophoto. And as you can see, in 1984, this location was very much underwater. So uh, any control points that we find in this area are not going to be usable in 1984 images. Uh, another thing to try to do is to use the most accurate, best resolution DEM that you have available for the study area. Um, again, how well you can, or how useful the control points are is going to depend on how accurate they are. So if you have an inaccurate DEM, your end result is going to be less accurate. One thing to keep in mind as well is that uh, we have foreshortening or relief displacement in images. So as we're looking at uh, features like mountaintops, they're going to appear to shift and they might even change shape. Um, so something like this, so if you take keep a close eye on the feature that's here. You can see that this, um, this rock feature has an angle that looks like this in this photo. And in this photo, it's stretched out a bit, it's elongated, and you can also see that it almost looks like it's rotated a bit as the uh, camera has changed positions. So these are things to keep in mind as well, is that you wanna, you wanna make sure that you're identifying the right point in each of the images so you need to you need to look carefully at these different points or at these different images uh, again how much of this uh, displacement occurs is going to depend on the height and the location in the image as we talked about in our second lesson of this week um, you might have to use trial and error too you might find that you think you have some good control points and you put them all in and it turns out they don't work very well, so you might have to try again. Um, 
it's a, it's a slow process, but you can get good results. So to sum all of this up, uh, ground control points or control points help us to fix our images to the real world uh, to help us make real world calculations uh, using, our, uh, using our images. Typically, we need at least five different points uh, in the images. It needs to be visible in at least two different images, and it needs to be well distributed in X, Y, and Z. And if you remember from the previous lesson, these points also cannot make a straight line with each other. If they are making a straight line with each other, then the equations will no longer work. Uh, finally, finding natural control control points in images can be difficult. So if you're planning your own survey or you're going out to acquire your own images, bring control points with you and make sure that you survey them properly. Okay, that is all for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting. And if you have any questions, please post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.